Welcome to the Body Science Podcast. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. <laughs> Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And with me, I've got two special guests today, actually. I've got Hayden Sargent, who's running around the sevens field, creating havoc worldwide and hitting an Olympics soon, which we'll be really excited to talk about. And Taj, who runs the athlete program at Body Science, and he's the one that Hayden and him had a chat, and it all turned into... I enjoy the BSC family. So how are you, mate? Um, unreal, mate. A little bit battered and bruised from Singapore, uh, but otherwise pretty good. Welcome, mate. It's good to speak to you today and kind of hear some of your stories. You know, I really want to know, like, obviously, you're a Gold Coast boy. You're not Gold Coast born. You're Grafton from yeah, Grafton. Yeah, that's so it. You're Grafton yeah. born, but you were hanging around the Gold Coast and we actually used to surf in the same spot. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. until I caught up with you the other day and I walked away from you and I said, God, I know that face. Like, I know that face. And I went, we surf together most days, like, obviously before you started head to Sydney yeah, and being yeah. a service player. I what I really want would love to talk about today is how, how did this journey happen? How do you go from being a guy on the Gold Coast who's out the surf all the time and next thing I'm seeing you in a sevens jersey, you know, dominating on the world stage? Oh, uh, it's such a it's such a long story and everyone has their their different journey on, I guess, how they got to where they are today. But I guess mine started uh, maybe the first year after school. Uh, um, my first year after school, well, I, I played club footy for, for Bond Uni, um, had a pretty solid year. Yeah, that was 15, yeah. sorry. And then uh, I got offered a two-year deal to join the Melbourne Rebels on a development contract. Uh, so I took that straight away with both hands and moved down to Melbourne and, and played my first year of uh, Melbourne Rebels under 20s. And unfortunately, after that, uh, Australian Rugby cancelled the, um, like the Super Rugby under 20s program. Uh, so the Rebels said, look, you can stay on and uh, like see out your second year of your development contract. It's unlikely that you'll play for the, the Rebels this year being so young. We would suggest you go back to Queensland and play club footy there just because the club footy in, in Melbourne isn't as strong. So I moved back home. And just before I, I left, one of the, the fellas, the managers down there, Nick Henderson, said, have you ever had a go at rugby sevens? Like you're just the perfect body, you know, shape and size. And uh, it hadn't crossed, really crossed my mind until then. Like I'd played a few tournaments with mates. Why had you never thought of sevens footy? I guess probably just because I was so focused on 15s. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I don't know, my whole mindset was probably when I was 10 years old, you know, I went to a Wallabies game and I was just hooked back in the, the glory days when full stadium and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. So I don't know, that that's probably the only answer I have of why I never thought of it, just probably because I was so focused on 15s. Had you ever played sevens through school? Like growing up, obviously you went to a big footy school, TSS, footy background. Yeah, TSS you know, boy, eh? Yeah, they live and breathe footy yeah. over there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Did, was, was sevens ever a, ever an option, like with a training comps or through club rugby or anything growing up? Yeah, we had we had one comp at the end of the year. Um, yep. It's a pretty big big comp that they have. And yeah, I played in that, but I, I guess it was more because we all played in it. You know, yeah. there was nothing in me going, that's what I want to do at that time. Yeah. Um, I guess because just all my mates and all the guys that played first 15 that were, were fast enough said, yeah, we'll give it a crack. So, yeah, that, that was probably the only other time I, I really gave it a crack. Seven to Bang is so exciting to watch now, isn't it? Like it is. And it- oh, mate, it, it's unreal. Like I, I try and tell the family and friends it's obviously hard because it's all around the world yeah. um, cost-wise for people to come watch. But, man, it, it's mainly for the spectators. Well, it is for the spectators, really. Yeah, it's um, unbelievable. You know, I ex- explained to my family in, in Twickenham last year, They've got this, the warm-up pitch feels like it's in the middle of a festival. <laughs> like, yeah, you walk out of the stadium, you walk through what feels like a, a beer tent into <laughs> your, your stadium, which has about a half a metre white picket fence, keeping the people out. But literally around you, it's like a festival, you know, people going off you, they're trying to warm up. <laughs> people are yelling out, who knows what. And then, you know, you walk back through and back into a full house stadium where it's pumping. So, yeah, That's I cool. love it. You got, you got talent ID by, who did you say it was? Uh, so a, a manager down at Melbourne yeah. just just briefly mentioned it to me, and okay. that, that probably planted the seed in my head that went, yeah, that is something that would interest me. You know, I moved back to the to Queensland, continued with like the Reds under twenty stuff. Uh, then the following year, I played Australian under twenties. Yep. Um, and then following year, I oh the end of that year, sorry, I played my first probably seven season for Bond University, which you play over the the summer. And I guess off the back of that, they have a, a national sevens every year. I got selected in, in a, the second Queensland team. So for me, I'll start, you know, first year of seasons, I made a, a Queensland side and 
um, I actually got to captain that side. So, you know, I was just over the moon to be in any Queensland or representative side for a sevens team. Uh, and then the following year, I played 15s again and then moved to, I moved back to Melbourne uh, for an NRC gig, which was the, the national rugby comp uh, they had back then. And at the time, I, I got a call from the Australian sevens manager. He said, um, why aren't you playing in the, the sevens comp anymore? Which was at the end of the season again. I said, oh, I've actually moved down to Melbourne. I'm playing in the uh, the NRC comp. And uh, he said, would you be keen to fly, if we fly you back to Brisbane to play in a comp, uh, the Australian coach at the time is going to watch and he wants to see you play. Uh, so I said, oh, okay, yeah, no dramas. So I flew back that week um, and played in the, uh, a comp there in Brisbane and it was torrential rain. It was an absolutely <laughs> terrible comp. I remember I got back on the, the plane that night just, all my gear stank. It was it was terrible. But um, I was in Melbourne, and then I actually got a call saying uh, they'd like to offer me a development contract. So me and a, another friend and um, fellow from Bond, uh, Josh Walker, uh, got offered development contracts at the time. So I guess how that worked was then we flew to Sydney, where the base is, and I kind of did like, like almost like FIFO for a couple of weeks, where I flew in, did training camp with the boys, and then go back to to Queensland. And then that year, I, I kind of did all, all the development tours uh, with the Australian Seven. So uh, I never played on the series that year, but I just did all the tours that were, I guess, underneath following the circuit. So when the boys played in uh, Vegas, I would play in a development side underneath in like the comp below. Uh, we went to Borneo, Fiji. Um, so that was my year. And then the following year, I had a, a similar ambition. Um, and then that's kind of when, when COVID really hit. Um and they, they kind of said, oh, look, uh, we'd love to have you. But unfortunately, with circumstances that we're in, it's it's just not going to work. Uh, so I kind of thought, oh, I didn't really know what to think at the time. I, I guess no one really knew how long COVID was going to last or um, what was going to play out of it. So I guess I, I moved back and I was, I was studying throughout that time as well. Uh, and I'd finished my degree by, by this point. Uh, and I just started working full time for Hutchinson Builders who – were really unreal to me, mate, during the, the whole COVID process. They kind of let me go away with, with footy. Uh, I guess my boss at the time was an ex-footy player and, and he was all about it. So anytime I was like, oh, do you mind if I take some time off? He was like, mate, you don't even have to ask. Just just go and, and do your thing, mate. Yeah, I mean, I'm super grateful for that. Looking back at it now, you know, he really pushed for it. And I guess being through it, he kind of understood the, the process that I was going through, which really helped in the long run. And um, so then, yeah, I, I guess COVID hit and or was it maybe two or two or three years? I was just working full time as a contract administrator for Hutchies, and then uh, next thing I know, I was sitting can in. I, a, a can forecast. we jump in here? Can I jump in here? Yeah. So you've you've gone to Brisbane, moved to Melbourne, moved back to Gold Coast, moved back to Melbourne. You've finally got a gig where you're getting close to you want to be. COVID hits, yeah. so you're like you're just totally stripped of anything that you've been thinking of. How, as a young man, how did you handle this mentally? Like, what kept you in that position of wanting to draw? Like, looking at hardship and resilience and all those, you know, those key driving words, you've ticked all those boxes to get to where we are in the story right now. Like, okay. what what was it that kept you in this space? Uh, it would have been really easy to go, got a degree, got a salary, I'm out. Like, I'm just going to run off and... It's, it's so funny to say that. I still think about that all the time. And uh, I, I don't really know the, the truthful answer. I guess it it's just it just feels like something inside of me kept wanting to train. Like yeah. I was like, I can't I can't stop. Like, you know, with when in the middle of COVID, there wasn't even like a, a goal or an end where you could, you know, no, set exactly. your goals and, and get there. So so I guess every part of me it was just like I something inside of me was just like, You can't stop now. Like you're so close. So I don't know. I don't know the truthful answer, but I, I just thought I'm not done yet. Like there's something more that I still want to do. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. But I just I just kept grinding and training and I just thought if I can stay ready for as long as I can, I'm sure my mates were probably laughing going, look at this kid training. You know, I was getting a bit older than your, your average person. That makes a debut, um, you know, 24. Did you get into haters like a lot of people around you supportive or like, come on, man, you got a degree, let's go, let's go chase that with um, not really. Definitely not, I guess, any haters. I guess the a few guys I worked with used to bloody grind me saying, come on, mate. So I used to get, I used to ask to get to uh, work early so I could leave early to go train in the other. Yeah. And they'd always ride me saying, come on, mate, just come have a beer or why out have a beer. <laughs> the old beer that, was, that was pretty tough. That was pretty yeah. tough. You know, you want to be a part of the boys as well. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, 
I guess the the inner drive. I I guess I thought it would be harder to harder to quit than it would be to keep going at the point where I was at. Um, so yeah, that, that probably answers that question. So how long after government COVID stupidity did we start to get back on track to pull on that jersey? So it might have been so throughout COVID, it might have been around three years. And um, so you sat through three years of this. It really hasn't been an an easy path so far, has it? Uh, you, you you wanted this, like you seriously? Yeah, I know. I don't really, I don't really think of it as hard because I, I, you know, I think of hard things as you know when people go through trauma or you know when family passes away. Like everyone's got a different story. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes it's mentally hard, yes, but I always think that there's harder things in life than the grind that I went through. There's there's always worse things that other people are going through. I've got to ask you there, who who were the key people in your life around that time that kind of kept that yeah, drive on you when you had that self-doubt or I guess, you know, the, just thinking, how how can I push through this? How do I know that end goal's there, just being left in the unknown? Was there anyone you want to shout out that was really there for you in that key moment? Yeah, yeah, for sure. My my family and my, my partner are the number one supporters and they always have been. I don't think you'll get bigger supporters than both my nans. I think you, you go on the Aussie Servants Instagram at the moment. I think they both comment one after another, saying Aiden for MVP. And even if I play two minutes, they're, they're still commenting better than that. Um, but no, nah, my my family and partner have been unreal. Um, but and then other than that, I just I just kind of did it with a bit of self belief myself. Yeah. So um, yeah, just a bit of adversity is nothing too bad. Uh, I would I don't know. I always compare. You know, you always think of your life as like a story and. I always think, oh, it's not too bad compared to what other people are going through in life. Mm. So let's let's get back on track. Let's talk about the next step. So COVID's happened. What, what happened after that? You got a call. Like, let's talk about the story. Getting back onto the seventh store. Yeah, so I was in a, a forecast meeting for the high rise I was building at the time. Yeah, and um, I remember I was sitting there, and my phone went off, and I was embarrassed because it played out loud. And I looked down, and John, it was John, the head coach, calling me, and uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't answer it at the time because we were we were in such a serious meeting that I kind of put my phone face down and I quickly muted it um and I went wonder I wonder what he's calling me for you know I, I like at that time I kind of thought I was probably done um I thought oh, I was obviously still training and, and still had that belief but you know when it happens you kind of just get in a bit of shock going I wonder what this is for um so after the meeting finished I just went on the, the balcony at work gave him a call back and uh he said oh we've We've got a few injuries um, in the playmaking position that you're in. Would you be interested in coming down and and training with us for a few weeks just so I can get a, a good look at you? Because uh, the, the coaching um, roles had changed in this uh, period. Yep. So John was a, a new coach at the time. Oh, I guess that hadn't seen me. He was previously with the girls. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Again, spoke to my boss after he'd been so good to me. I guess before COVID, and I said. And I was, thought I was in a pretty good position at work, so I was a, I was actually a little bit scared to tell him, you know, to think, you know, <laughs> thinking is he going to question my commitment to work? Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> I was I was a little bit nervous to speak to him, but he said, Matt, like you don't need to be nervous about this type of stuff. Like I get it. Like work, you'll be able to work for the rest of your life. Like footy isn't isn't going to be there forever. So so take it. So um so flew to Sydney, um did a week's worth of training and uh. And at this point, LA was coming up and it was two weeks away. And um, so he only asked me to come down to the week. And at the end of the week, he said, oh, I want you to train next week as well. So I, I flew home on the, the Friday afternoon after training, spent the weekend, got some more clothes and then came back to Sydney. And uh, I packed my passport, you know, just in just in hope that, that something happened and I got selected. I didn't tell anyone that at the time, but I packed it just being like, please, pleased you know just hoping i'd get a chance and uh at the end of that week uh the coach called me in and said uh we're going to take you we want to take you to la to potentially make your debut and uh I, I how were you feeling like, in that moment sorry to butt in oh, there yeah. i just want to talk about like that phone call that's the phone call you've ultimately been waiting on most of that time to three years ago okay. three years like you know, that, yeah that's that yeah. moment but let's talk about you in that moment where were you how were you feeling what was going through your head um no, I actually tried to play it down in in my own head. I didn't want to, um, you know, build myself up again and then and then not be selected and then be like ultimately disappointed that I didn't get to make my debut. Um, I always like to expect the worst 
and hope for the best. So yeah, I guess I was, I was always prepped for, okay, what's the worst case scenario is I'll go down, give it my best shot at training for a week, show them what I've got. And then the worst case scenario is he's going to say, you know, these guys have recovered from injury. Unfortunately, we can't take you. So I tried to keep it really cool. Um, maybe on the inside, <laughs> I was burning up a little bit. Um, but uh, no, I, I probably just tried to play it down to think, okay, like don't get too ahead of yourself here. You might just be training for a week and then you're back to reality with work. So, so that's hey, probably where that, my you, taste was at. Your, your mindset for that week of training, like this is it. This is make or break time really because there's no – this is the opportunity. Yeah. And – do, do you go down there on this week and go, I'm just going to play a really safe what he wants to see space? Or do you go down there and dominate and just show your pure ability as, as an athlete and go, if if I fuck up, I fuck up, but this is what I'm good at? Like, I, we, we tend to lot of mean to do things, and you obviously you got to walk into the meeting and read the room a little bit from my mm-hmm. perspective, but from your perspective, yeah. this is your shot. So did you yeah. go down there and... No, that, that's a great show question. everything you had or did you go down there and say, this is enough to get me where I am? I won't make a mistake. I'm going to be pretty bulletproof. No, that, that's that's an awesome question. And and truthfully, it's a really hard mental battle. Like you mm. say, it's, you know, finding the right line of, am I doing too much that it looks stupid or am I just giving them what they want to see and not showing what, I, I guess, the original true self, you yep. know, that you want to show. Um, and I, I guess I'd been there enough when I did all that stuff before COVID where I probably did play that that role of being safe. Um, so this time when I went down, you know, I, I actually had this, I guess, inner conversation with myself. I was like, I was literally just like, fuck it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Like nice. I thought, I've, I, in my head, I was like, and maybe I've got one more chance at this. So I'm just going to give it a hundred percent, you know, you know, so, sometimes in footy, you do a thing called gentleman's agreement when it comes to contact that you're not trying to flatten someone. Yeah. And I was like, no. Nah. Everything's out the window here. I'm just, I just have, on. I've only got, I might only have one chance of this. So I was like, no, I just got to go hard, give it everything I got. And yeah, I guess I've also learned with a, a bit of maturity that as long as you give it 100%, you can walk away with things, you know, saying, oh, at least I did everything I could. So, but then on the flip side of that, at training, I, I always think I was running too much that the coach pulled me aside and said, hey, mate, you got to pass the ball a little bit. <laughs> He goes, you're going to get isolated if you keep running like that on the circuit. And I said, okay, yeah, fair point, fair point. Um, so, yeah, that that was probably my mentality. I was just like, yeah, everything's out the window. I just got to go and give it one red hot crack. I love that because you, you definitely got to that moment the hard way. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't a sweet journey at all. I mean, it's great. It's made you the athlete and person who you are today, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what what was it like? Obviously, you pulled on the, the gold jersey before as, what did you say, in the under-20s? Yeah, under 20s, yeah. yeah, yeah. What did it feel like getting that kit on that first trip, uh, the track suit, that famous first track suit? Yeah, it definitely was different to me. Um, I guess compared to the under 20s journey, I, I was almost just like on a safe trajectory that I was always on that road. There, there yeah. wasn't a lot of hiccups compared to kind of what I went through to get to this one. Um, so, yeah, yeah, when I got it, well, I guess to, to go back a little bit to finish off the rest of the story – um, the first meeting he said, we're thinking, so you take 12 on a tour and usually have a 13th man for injury cover. Yeah. And he said, oh, we're, uh, we're going to take you as 14th because the other two guys that I originally came in for that were injured were, they were sweet by the time we left. Okay. So I said, oh, okay. So again, I, I was like, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play. Like I'm just saying maybe for a development side of things, maybe he wants me for the next leg. I don't know. And, uh, so I told my mum and dad, and at the time they said, oh, should we come over and watch? And I said, no, no, like I'm 14th man. I, I don't even think I'll play. And uh, long story short, we got to the airport and there was only 13 players there. So I, I thought I was 13th. I was like, okay. So I, I messaged my mum and dad saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm only 13th. I'm not 14th. Like I might be closer than, <laughs> than what I think. And then uh, so before you play the day before, we usually have like a one-on-one with the coach just to – I guess, break things down and go back to the simple basics of what we want to achieve uh, for the tournament. Um, and in that meeting the night before, he told me I was going to be playing in that the next day. Like I wasn't the 13th man. And I was like, oh, God. Like I probably wasn't as mentally prepped as what I should have been. <laughs> because I told myself I was going to be 14th. Um, so, yeah, that uh, I guess when, you, when I first pulled on that jersey uh, in LA, it was against Kenya. And, uh, man, I, I actually was a wreck. 
<laughs> I'd hate to see a photo of myself in the change room before we ran out just because I was, you know, so proud of myself um, just from all the little things you go through. And I keep saying it, everyone goes through different things, but, I, yeah, I was just proud of myself of what I went through and that, I, that I've done it. You know, I, I wanted it for so long. It's something I dreamt of and, you know, worked so hard for that when it happened. I was, yeah, I was just an emotional wreck. She's just so proud of myself and uh, thankful for what everyone's done for me to get to me where I am. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cool. So are you a chucker before you go on or are you a good little shit? You got to <laughs> just go, go put music on, no, talk to me. Like what type of person are you in the dressing shed before you run on? Well, I, I'm not a chucker, but <laughs> on the plane ride over to LA, there was a bit of turbulence and the chick next to me spewed because of the turbulence, but I, felt, I had to run to the back, whether it was because of the nerves, and I had a chuck on the plane on the way over after yeah. that. That's a pretty funny story. Uh, oh, well, my so first tour. Big thing next to me used to vomit as a kid. It was straight. I was next. Like, yeah, as soon as I see it, I'm on. So if you uh, went that, she went, I would have gone as well if I was on that plane. So. <laughs> Let's talk about that game. So put the jersey on. You're on the sideline. What, what minute did you go on? Like, when was your debut? debut? Like, what was that, that key uh, moment? Was it a close right. game? Was it a it the in? first game against Kenya? We didn't make many subs because it was such a tight game. And I actually think we lost. Yeah. I didn't get on because it was so okay. tight. And I, I'm speaking on behalf of the coach, but I assuming he didn't want to put me on in my debut at, under a pressure moment. And yeah, it was, sure. The tournament was terrible just because it was torrential rain. Um, you know, throughout the tournament, it was hailing. It got called off for half. So I think he knew he kind of wanted to give me a, a nicer introduction to the World Series so you don't have, I guess, so you're not scarred from it. A terrible start so i yep. didn't play that game so yeah warmed up for the next game and we had japan um and the boys got off to a, a pretty good start uh so he gave me the cue to to you know, keep warm on the sideline um so yeah i think i went on with maybe only three or four minutes to go and uh i, I still to this day think that was the like most tired i've been after a game, just because I went on, you know, yeah, um, adrenaline was through the roof. And I'm pretty sure all I did was just like sprint shuttles from side to side, <laughs> just like overworking. Um, but yeah, that was my, and I'm pretty sure all I did was tackle. I don't even think I ran the ball. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the debut, mate. And uh, and uh, it was really special that it topped off that uh, my dad and my brother actually flew over. It didn't tell me. And I didn't think they were going to be there because I told them originally I was going to be 14th. And, uh, yeah, they surprised me in the, the grandstands as we were walking back to the sheds, mate. And, uh, yeah, that was a pretty special moment in my life. Yeah, that's uh, unreal. That's so good. That's so good. So, Olympic year, did you ever think, have they picked the team yet that's going? Okay. Uh, have you guys qualified and everything's all? Yeah, so we've, we've qualified. So the Australian yep. team itself yep. has qualified. Uh, they won't announce the team, I believe, the dates till July 1st. So pretty much... I think a, a week or two weeks before we leave. That's the yeah, same with the so girls, I'd, yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming they'll be the same with when they release the the names. Um, but yeah, it's obviously so hard. With uh, you've got form, you've got injuries, you've got guys coming back from injuries. So yeah, it's it's a tough one. Um, you know where you sit in the the ranking wise, or I guess I guess personally, I'm not trying to focus on that. I I just trying to think. You know, what can I tick off the boxes before that to put myself in the best position? Which is you know you just want to train well and play well at the end of the day and put yourself in the best position to, to make that final selection. Let's just assume you make the team and you're part of the squad that goes. Yep. Does that What does it mean for a professional rugby player who, like you just said, like the events are crazy fun every time you do them, mm-hmm. to to be an Olympian? Like is that is that the icing on a cake or is that something just so solid? Like obviously I've spent a lot of time with the Kenny Wallace and that and their whole sport is about being Olympic, like the Olympics is yep. – yeah, I mean, World Cups and Olympics. But for you, it's a different scenario in that you travel the world extensively now. You run around and live this lifestyle of a rock star athlete that sevens players are. Yeah. So what does the Olympics mean to you as, as that rugby player? Yeah, that's a that's another good question. I guess it's, it is the pinnacle at the end of the day. The Olympics so it's is still the pinnacle, pinnacle to you as a rugby player. That's cool to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. The, it's the top tier. It's the pinnacle. Um, it's obviously the hardest. Um, but I guess... Maybe we're a little bit more used to it as a sevens um, program, I guess, yep. compared to, to other sports where we are already living that um, similar lifestyle where you're, you're constantly mm. on the world circuit. Um, so I, I'm sure there would be other athletes, you know, that can maybe get caught up in the, the hype around it. But I guess um, seeing that we already live it, it's not too dissimilar. You know, obviously there's more hype. You can't deny that. 
but yeah, it's obviously similar to what we're currently doing. After the say mate, the Olympics, you go. Are we getting an Olympic tattoo or not? I need, yeah, you know, well, I, I need to know the extent of the commitment here. <laughs> I was going to say, um, where's the tattoo going? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I said for. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. My dad always said to me, I was never to get a tattoo, and he said, if you make the Olympics, then you can get a tattoo. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Not sure yet. Not, not sure. I try not to think about it. <laughs> um. So obviously, the when we're talking about the rugby teams being selected and everything, I occasionally hear that sometimes other countries pull some of their their fifteens team mm-hmm. players into the team. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, well, what are your thoughts on that? Like, as in, you, you play the sevens, play the World Series, you play all these comps throughout the years. Do you do you believe a that it, it's fair that the fifteen players get that call up for the Olympics, or do you think that your team is the best team? that that can field for australia it's a really tough one i guess the the equation or the question is are you going with the the people that i guess have better chemistry because they've played together longer um or are you bringing someone in let's say that might be technically a better player but i guess you sacrifice the chemistry um so yeah i mean i'm i'm not against it at all it's just obviously finding the right balance is the hardest part for for any selector or or coach you know do you go all in and bring in a bunch of, um, like I said, the technically better mm-hmm. players that are playing mm-hmm. 15s or are you going with guys that have, have played together for a year and just have a little bit higher chemistry? You know, I, I guess yeah. it's like FIFA. You know how you have the chemistry yeah, exactly. levels on FIFA and, you know, you can play with better players but their chemistry isn't, you know, what what do you go with? It's it's a tough one. I guess it's a it's a tough answer and I don't know the answer <laughs> to give you the truth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind the idea to it. Yeah, awesome. Since you opened up the can here, Taj, I want to ask the question. Do you prefer the strategy of the 15 game or the athleticism of the seven? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I like I like the idea of the strategy in 15s. I've always yeah. been a big fan of um, thinking of it as like a game of chess in a way. You know, you can do this to manipulate someone to do that. Um, but I also love that... Uh, the individual athleticism that you could get within seven, you know, you, you get because the seventh player is a true athlete, isn't? It? I mean, not that fifteens isn't, yeah, but you can't hide on the sevens field when you're playing sevens. No, I, I heard a really good saying the other day uh, that someone in Australian rugby said he he said if you play rugby sevens, you're an athlete first and you're a footy player second. Um, yep, yeah, which I was like, oh, that's that's a pretty good point to make, uh, just because of what you really have to go through out there on the field, fit, fitness wise really, uh, and you've still got that that contact element that's obviously isn't the same extent as 15s, uh, but, yeah, it's difficult. How does the training differ between 7s and 15s too? Because probably a lot of people out there going, oh, they're both playing rugby, like it's put under the rugby cap. But how yeah. does the training differ? No, it's it's extremely different. Um, yeah. I guess 15s, you're obviously more, I guess, I'm not going to say the break the breakdown is is more important in 15s because it's it's equally as important, but you have more breakdowns in 15s. So I guess you have more work in 15s. Uh, you also do a, a lot more like separated stuff with forwards and backs. Like I guess a, let's run through a normal training session of of each. Let's say you get there in 15s, you do your warm up, you do your your warm up team stuff. Then you might break off into like an individual skill, which might be your your breakdown, your tackling. Um, your stuff around the ruck, which, you know, takes 15, 20 minutes to, to work on each session. And then you'll split forwards and backs. So forwards will go away for 30 minutes. Backs will train for 30 minutes doing their individual uh, line-out work, backs players, starters. And then you come together and then you might have a 20-minute run and then you've got a 20-minute opposed following that. While sevens is, is so different because you I probably missed out on a little bit of fitness there in the, the 15s of a warm-up. You might do, you know, five, 10 minutes where you go to a sevens, you do five, 10 minutes of your individual warm up, and then you're into fitness straight to start. You know, you got to get the body primed to see it. And then you roll into your um, team play, but you're trying to do it under fatigue. While 15s, there's, there's less of that because when you're out there on the field, you, you try and get yourself prepped for the worst case scenario. So you're not going to say all the time, but most of the time you're, you're training under fatigue, uh, not just physically, but mentally when you're. When you're tired, it's so easy to to make a simple mistake or make the easy option just because you are that fatigued. So, yeah, extremely different. Um, but I guess to answer the original question, I still love the the 15s, you know, manipulation mindset, chess side of the game. But I, I still think you can do that in sevens. But I also love the physical and athletic side in the, mm-hmm. in the sevens. 
<clears throat> Super cool to watch. Super cool to watch. Let's talk about you post sevens. All right. Mm-hmm. So, are you thinking staying on on the on, on the sevens tour? Obviously, you guys live the best lives ever, getting to travel to multiple countries a year, having lots of fun playing footy. To open up the question, like when I was speaking to the Levi girls the other day. They were telling me about how, you know, post sevens, they they might be interested in swapping over to NRL instead of the girls. Well, have they said that in loud touch, or have you just said that? No, no, they have. It's yeah. it's exploring all our options, like when <laughs> when nothing <laughs> coming out. Um, what about yourself? Would you ever take interest in anything like NRL or always um, in the union so zone? I'm always all ears to to I guess all opportunities and and everyone's yeah. opinions. Uh, that's always kind of what I like to live by, try and get as much information as you can and make yeah, it best, for sure. estimated or uh, best judge or guess by the end of it. Um, but, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm always open to to hear what people have got to offer. And, uh, yeah, if something pops up, mate, I'd, I'd love to hear it. But uh, at the moment, yeah, my goal is just to focus on sevens. I've worked so long to get here that I'm trying not to think of any external factors at the moment. I just want to concentrate on what I can do and that obviously big goal coming up shortly. How cool is that? Love it. Is there any advice you'd like to give to up-and-coming, say, rugby players, whether they're like your scenario from the Gold Coast, which doesn't have a huge sevens build-up in that school yeah. school base? Like any advice you'd like to give to, I guess, explore the, the, the circumstances of how your journey happened and maybe help them in a way of suggesting maybe you guys could try this or try something different? From the experience that you've learned, the whole Olympic pathway of rugby too, yeah, like, yeah. Like how, how, what advice would you give for for footy players and exploring that sevens option? Like you said, not even recognizing it um, post school. So yeah, yeah, that that's a good one. Um, I mean, I I would tell anyone interested to definitely get down to uh, a club. I guess for the if you're a Gold Coast boy or girl, uh, that club would be Bond University. We saw uh, how Charlotte Catholic, you know, led the way for the the women's side of the game through Bond Uni. Um, yep. And that's obviously had a huge domino effect now. And, you know, the, the support and growth that's come from that is huge. Um, but, yeah, I would definitely try and get involved in, I guess, for Bond University, if you were keen to have a crack at sevens, um, and then get involved in that circuit that they play over summer because uh, there's always people watching. Uh, my mum always said that to me growing up. You never know who's watching, so uh, every game counts. Uh, but, yeah, that that's would be my best bit of advice for anyone wanting to play or is currently playing play that uh, summer circuit because, yeah, the, the coaches and selectors are always watching the Queensland comps and Sydney comps. So, yeah, that's probably my bit of advice. And if they want to do it, I, I have no doubt you can put your mind to it and give it a wrap-up crack. <laughs> How good's that? Hey, Hayden, thanks for coming on, mate. We really appreciate your time. I know it's tough when you're doing a lot of travel and your recovery and training commitments, and it's always nice for people to hear your story through, you know, the Body Science Podcast, and I can't thank you enough yeah. for coming on board today. Um, Taj? You two are doing a good work together. I really appreciate what you guys are doing in that space. Awesome to have you on board this year, hopefully for many more. Yeah, it's good to see all these young, young, new, fit sports and different sports too. Like, I don't think we've had sevens in our program before in our 25 years here, have we? Not in the last, yeah, it's pretty much this year and last year was the first time we've had rugby sevens come on board. Yeah, so. Or players, sorry. Um, So super stoked with that. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Stoked to be a part of the team. You all the best. One last quick question I've got to ask this yeah. day. Yeah. Maddie Levi, like, can you run her down? Like, if she took off, could you? Nah, she'd probably have me. Like, she talks a big fucking game, Maddie. Like, when you get Maddie face to face, she wants to run at Taj and just, you know, like all the time, like, you can't take me, Taj. Like, take him down. Do you, how do you reckon you go? Yeah. She's quite an athlete, eh? Like, she's, a, she's probably going to be one of the, the best female athletes ever, I reckon. Uh, she's yeah. Young, isn't she? Yeah, she's an elite athlete. Uh, yeah. No, I'll give her the win. <laughs> give her the win. <laughs> Safe play. Good answer. <laughs> no, she's just um, – it's just – I just love seeing the South think Sevens athletes and the sport and where it's going and the way it's marketed and the way you guys market yourself within that platform. It's just epic. Yeah. I think it's – It's definitely making the experience fun again. Oh, it's making like it be great. You know, it's making rugby yeah. great again. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's Post-com games, that, that Gold Coast comms games is, I think, where our first was ex- – like experience rugby sevens. And I think that's the first yeah. stand that I had that was like, wow, this is such a cool atmosphere. You know, you get to watch five, six games in a the day. They're, you know, yeah. nice and short. You're not yeah. watching, you know, absolute thrashings in 40, 80 minute games. You're watching nice, quick games, which is really cool to watch. So oh, keep doing what you're doing, man. And we, we love, love having your body sevens. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Right. Cheers, Cheers, Legend. Bye. Bye.